Good morning. Um, welcome back to Learning with Miss Lee. We're going to continue a reading lesson. Today we're going to talk about um, history. It's going to be reading, but it's also going to be a little bit of um, American history and Alabama history. We're going to read a Cherokee lang uh, legend. We talked about legends, folk tales. These are stories that were told by the people passed down from word of mouth. Now, uh, in Native American cultures, uh, the stories were passed down. There wasn't a written language for a long time. There was a, a picture language, and we're going to have an art lesson that will follow this after I've told the story. And so, um, Dancing Drum is a Cherokee legend, and the reason I picked Cherokee is because the Cherokee Nation was originally in the southern part of the United States, where Alabama is located now. And during the Trail of Tears is when the um, Native Americans were moved out west where they live now. But the Cherokees started and they were here before we were. Um, so this is their land that we live in in Alabama. Georgia, Mississippi, Florida, and the Carolinas and, and Tennessee. And so in the southern part of the sta United States, this is where we're from. So let's begin. And it says, One day long ago, when souls could still return from the land of the spirits, the sun looked down upon the earth. The people of the mountain do not like me, she said to her brother the moon. See how they twist up their face when they look at the sky. Ah, but they love me, replied the moon. They smile when they see me. They make music and dance and sing me songs. This did not please the sun, for she thought she was more important than her brother and more deserving. That night, as she always did, she visited her daughter for the evening meal. How can the people love my brother and not me, she asked. I will show them it is unwise to offend me. And the next morning, following, followed by the next and the next, she sent scorching heat upon their land. During this time of the angry sun, there lived a small Cherokee village, a boy named Dancing Sun. He saw the suffering of his people. The crops no longer flourished, the children no longer laughed, the old women no longer gossiped. The river Long Man was driving up. Soon there would be no water, even for drinking. Dancing Drum went to the shaman and asked, Why is Grandmother Moon, Sun burning the land and the people? How can we make her stop? The shaman drank the last drop of water from her drinking gourd. I don't know. But I had a dream. A woodpecker came to me and told me to go to the little man in the wood. Alas, I have grown too weak to travel. But you, you are young and strong. It is up to you to go. All right, so the shaman is the, the wise person of the village that would know all things. So... Honored to be chosen for such an important mission, Dancing Drum followed the shaman's directions and soon found the little man in the wood. How can we make Grandmother Sun stop burning the people? He asked them. You must go to the land of the sky people and kill the sun before she destroys us all. First, take the snake rattles and tie them onto your moccasins. As soon as he did this, Dancing Drum felt a strange tingling flow from his heels to his head. Suddenly, he could not move his arms, and when he tried to move his legs, he only heard the shaking of the rattles. He called for help. Hiss was all he could say, for he had become a snake. Do not worry, said the leader of the little men. You will be yourself again when your task is complete. 
He pointed to a small opening in the underbrush. Now follow this path to the house of the son's daughter. And in the morning when the sun comes out, bite her quickly. So he turned into a snake. Look at the beautiful colors. Beautiful colors. He's a snake. Soon dancing drum came to became used to slithering sideways movements of his new body. He slithered along the path into the woods up the tallest mountain, through the mist of the clouds themselves, and at last he came upon a large domed house made of mud and cane. It was the house of the son's daughter. Since it was near dawn, Dancing Drum hid behind the clay pot stacked outside the door. I'll catch the sun as she comes out, he thought. But when the door opened, she rushed by him so quickly he didn't have time to strike. He would have to be more alert next time. He slept throughout the day, and as twilight approached, Dancing Drum was ready. This time, when the sun drew near, he tensed to spring at her. But at the last instant, he turned away, blinded for a moment by her brilliance. So here he is hiding. He's hiding in the pots. Oh, I must try again, he vowed, and this time I will not miss. Through the night he waited. As soon as he heard stirrings from inside the house, he slithered to the door and closed his eyes. Forgive me, grandmother, son, he hissed. A moment later, the door opened and dancing drums struck. He felt his fangs sink deep into her ankle, but when he looked, he saw that it was not the sun, but her daughter who lay dead on the ground. Just then, dancing drums shed his scaly skin. He was a boy once more. With suns wailing, filling the air, he ran from the land of the sky people. Over the clouds he went, through the mist, down to the tallest mountains, and after many days he reached his village. There the chief was holding council. At last we have relief from grandmother's son's burning heat, he said, but in her sadness over the death of her daughter, she no longer leaves her house. He pulled his robe tighter around his shoulder. Now the people are cold and in darkness. Stepping into the chief's circle, Dancing Drum announced, I am the cause of this darkness. I stop the heat, but our suffering grows worse. I will go to the land of the spirits and bring back the daughter of the sun, and then our grandmother will once again smile upon our people. Once more, Dancing Drum consulted the shaman. Take six others with you, she advised, in a large basket. You will find the daughter of the sun dancing with the ghost of Sukini. Each of you must touch her with a sour wood rod. Then, when she falls to the ground, put her into the basket and secure the lid. Then bring her back here. This we shall do, answered Dancing Drum. He chose six of the swiftest stickball players in the village. They were about to leave for the darkening land when the shaman cautioned, Once you have her in your basket, do not lift the lid. For days, the runners followed the path of the land of the spirits, and at the end of the seventh day, they heard drums and chanting. Then they saw the ghost circling a low fire. The daughter of the sun danced in the outer ring, heel toe, heel toe. From their hiding place in the shrub, Dancing Drum and his companions took turns reaching out with their sour wood rods. Each time the daughter of the sun passed, one of them touched her. Dancing Drum's rod was the seventh. 
As he brushed her, she collapsed. The ghost seemed not to notice, so the boys hastily picked her up, put her into the basket, and secured the lid tightly. After a time, the daughter of the sun started moving around in the basket. Let me out, she called to the runners. I must eat. At first, the seven ignored her. Then she called, Let me out, I must have water. Again, her plea went unanswered. When they were almost to the village, the basket started to shake. Let me out, called the daughter of the sun. This time, her voice sounds strangled. I cannot breathe, she croaked. Dancing Drum was afraid she might die again. So he opened the lid, a tiny crack. Suddenly, a flapping side came from inside the basket, and a flash of red flew past, followed by the whoosh, whoosh, whoosh cry of the red bird. Not sure what had happened, Dancing Drum quickly refastened the lid and hurried with his companions back to the village. Once there, the shaman opened the basket. It was empty. The daughter of the sun had been transformed into the red bird. You disobeyed, the shaman said to the Dancing Drum. For this, souls can no longer be returned from the land of the spirits. Dancing Drum hung, her head, hung his head, and Grandmother Sun, watching from the sky world, began to weep. She cried so hard, her tears filled long man to overflowing, threatening a great flood over the land. What shall we do now, the people cried. We shall sing, declared Dancing Drum. So the people put on their most beautiful clothes of embroidered buckskin. They wore necklaces of deer and panther teeth and painted their faces white. They lifted their faces to the sky and chanted for Grandmother Sun. They drummed and kept rhythm with their gourd rattles. But still, Grandmother Sun grieved. Finally, Dancing Drum left the singing and went to his lodge for his own drum. It had been a special gift from his grandfather. He filled the hollow log with water and dampened the groundhog skin, and at last he was ready. Returning to the group of singers, he sat and began to play his own song. From the land of the sky people, Grandmother's son heard the new music. She stopped crying and looked down to see her beautiful people smiling up at her. She saw them offering their special dances, and she heard their new special song. Dancing Drum lifted his face to the sky as he played from his heart, from the heart for his ancestors, for his people for his land. And as he played, Grandmother's son came out of her house to once again smile down on the children of the mountain. All right, so this is our story of, of how they got the sun to come out and not be so hot all the time. It starts our seasons. So sometimes the sun is hot, sometimes the sun is not. It also explains where the sun goes when the sun is not in the sky. And here, this is the area, Tennessee, Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, Mississippi, Alabama, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana. All of these places are where the Cherokee tribes were before the Trail of Tears and they were moved out west. Come back and we're going to have another lesson on Native Americans. It's going to be an art lesson. And so I look forward to seeing you soon.